everything was a challenge in those years because there was one line and I'm not sure what the one line was, but I always know I was never on it. My father got a contract because he looked like Clark Gable. And he, my mother said, I'm going to go to Hollywood after him or I'll never keep him. So I stayed with my grandmother and my mother went to Hollywood. She did not keep my father. They married and divorced three times to try to make it work. And so I grew up understanding at a very early age that to make a relationship work was very difficult. To find someone that you really cared about and cared about you was a miracle. I loved my father and I loved my mother, both of them. Neither of them ever talked dirty about the other one. You know, the, oh, he's this or she's that. They never gave me a reason to hate the other one. Not until I was a teenager did I really understand the, the heartbreak that they went through together. And my uncle was um, my Aunt Betty that my father, my father's side, he introduced her to a guy named Johnny Cocosa in New York who turned out to be Mario Lanza. And so that was another heartbreak hotel that I lived through and witnessed. So it's not easy to find the reality of all of those nice things that they published about life then. You see, I was um, brought up by a very liberal mother and father, as you've known. My mom had a tattoo on her right thigh. She walked around the house, usually with just um, a cord around her bosoms to hide the nipples, and sometimes little panties on, and sometimes she, to do her gardening, because we had a beautiful enclosed garden. She loved just to be naked and to do things herself. When I, she went into the bathtub, she'd pull me into the bathtub. Or if there was a fellow that came around that she liked because she divorced my dad and she had um, eyes to be a movie actress. And so I had an Uncle Freddie and I had an Uncle Don. I had an Uncle Ralph. I had an Uncle Joe. I mean, <laughs> I had so many uncles growing up. She wasn't a a hussy. That wasn't the way she lived. But she allowed her sexuality to show. She was beautiful and she wore a Linda Darnell hairstyle if she liked it or Jean Turney if she liked it. I mean, it was, the body was something to be loved, to be expressed and to be appreciated. When I first went to Hollywood, one of the, the priests that I used to talk to said to me, be very careful in Hollywood. It's going to ruin your life. It's going to ruin your faith. I would get out of it as soon as you can. I was 19 at the time. And I was blown away by that. And fortunately, I went to talk to the abbess at Regina Laudis, the foundress. I told her about the conversation, and she, she was, um, she came from Philadelphia and France. She had an amazing combination, and she said to me, "Dolores, what's wrong with your sexuality? What's wrong with loving somebody? What's wrong with loving a boy? What's wrong with loving anyone? Because that is who you are." you're not going to lose your faith in Hollywood. In fact, you may find it. Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't think I have it now? It's just not enough. And I said, well, do you think I could be I, I, someone that could enter the monastery? She said, no, not now. You go do your Hollywood thing, and maybe later it will, something will tell you what is the best thing. But you're not, that's not right for you now. And she was right. I was so happy. I just, I could have jumped up and down because she told me I was a human being with
with a heart and with a future. It was always an instinct, let's put it that way. It was something, a seed had been planted somewhere and it would come up and then I'd say, oh no, no, what I really want, I want to be a movie star, I want an Oscar, I want a really nice house, I want a great car. <laughs> I mean, I had the wants that were, in fact, when I finally went back to her five years later and told her about, is it ready? Yep, now. And she said, well, what do you want? And I went through my whole list. And then she said, then she said well, then why are you here? And then we had to go to the, we had to go to the depth. When I got Loving You, um, I was, um, uh, I was in, a freshman in Loyola University. And no, I was in Marymount. But Loyola had not come together yet. But I had gotten there by doing a scholarship on St. Joan of Arc. And I found that Loyola University was doing the play. So a boyfriend of mine, Don Barbo, um, sent my pictures all over, terrible picture. <laughs> all over the city and got me the part of St. Joan, which was, I was murdered back in Marymount because I was a freshman and only the seniors were supposed to have done that sort of thing. But, you know, an actress does what she has to do. <laughs> and I got the part and that was the, 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 the man who came to see the part was um, a man from Paul Nathan's office, Hal Wallace's office. They came and asked me if I wanted to do a film, and it was the, the Elvis Presley film. I believe my name was Nellie with Elvis, and his name was Deke. And, um, and it was our first screen kiss. Of course, th that film, that scene was the first film that they shot. They always do that in movies. So the first day on the set was the kiss. It was only 160 people on the set. So we get to the kiss, and I'm thinking, oh, how do I do this well? And, and to forget it. So we did the kiss. Five seconds into it, he says, cut. And I thought, oh my gosh, what, what could you do wrong? And he came over and he said, Wally Westmore, come over here. Her ears are red. <laughs> well, come on, you were kissing Elvis. Of course. Well, but they did it take two, and the second cut was that Elvis's ears were red. <laughs> I was um, absolutely in love with a film that I did with Anna Magnani, and they made my my hair practically black, and I had very dark skin, and they said they have blue eyes in North Italy, and it was, I only worked one day with her, and it was one of the most exciting days of my life as an actress. She was so amazing too. She never asked what was on the, on the paper. She wondered, What's, what, do you, what are you thinking about? You talk to me. It, it was incredible. We worked on the scene for six and a half hours. And I wanted to, to be that kind of actress. I wanted to have that kind of role. But I always got to play Nellie, or Melly or Mammy, or Sweetie, or Koozie, or, you know, <laughs> you get the point. When I entered the monastery, you will not believe the number of of hate letters I got, that I was doing the wrong thing. I was, what was the big one? I was swallowing razor blades. I was, my, my boss, Hal Wallace, said, don't ever come back to this town because I'll never let you work again. Fifteen years later, we got over that by his wife, Martha Heyer, who really solved things for him. But it was a long, long time after a, a wonderful relationship at the Abbey. I knew when I was there 
that I was home, that this was a place where I would really come to find the Lord that I had been looking for. And of course, it was the beginning of understanding that the finding of the Lord is to really find people. Because we, we had guests come. We weren't, you know, locked up away from, from the world of the family of man. And guests came and saw us in a parlor. And for some unknown reason, in that context, people just opened their hearts and asked for prayers for all the deep things that was going on. And so I think that was a tremendous gift to be able to see the heart of man, to be, let's say, to, to have the care of that heart. And you knew you could not be a damaging person. You had something that was precious, and you had to have a confidence, and that was part of it. There's a process that we use at the Abbey to understand new persons who come. It's called a 16-step process, and it begins with instinct. The next one is professional, the next one is love, and the next is union. And you come to know a person in all of those levels. And you come to understand that life is that way. In the beginning, things are hidden within the instinct. There, it, 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 there's a, a sort of new, young quality, but it's still very afraid. And you have to go through another level of professional growth and then you are allowed, when God enters your life, you can speak and be yourself in another level of love. And when you come to union, you can share that.